Peace. I'm your brother Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. You're watching Crumb TV. This is Prema Asset in Los Angeles, Lemur Park, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. We're watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. So subscribe. Look. I am the Grand Sheikas uh, Unity Temple Number 80 More Science Temple of America, and you are watching Crumb TV. Yo, this is that kid 179. You are now watching Crumb TV. Crumb TV. If you could, please repeat after me. Peace, Ashe, Islam, Namaste, Hotel, Grand Rising, Assalamu Alaikum, Walaikum Salam, Bumdia, Oseo, Halito, Umjambo. How are the children? Shalom, Wagwan, Bonjour, Nihao, Konnichiwa. Whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I am your humble brother Crumb here for another installation of Crumb TV. You already know what it is, family. This video is called The Origin of Bad Boy Records. But before I get into that, let me put some respect on your name and acknowledge the first responders. First, we have in the, well, there's a little bit less than 40 first responders, but for time's sake, we'll acknowledge the first three. We call those the perfect trifecta. So the first three in the building are Anthony Castle. He says, let's get, let's get it. Let's get it in. What's your cash app so I can support the channel? Wow. You know, I really am bashful about doing the cash app thing in the beginning because I don't want to come off as Pastor pork chop. So if he says it, then fine. I'm not going to say it because, you know, it's, it, it's, it's like a date. You know, the guy wants to whatever, but the guy can't just, hey, can we just, you know, you got to have some tact about it. You got to, you know, feed her a little bit. So, yeah, with that said, thank you so much for that one. Number two in the building. Let's keep this thing moving. Music Land HQ 82. He says, ye who has ears will hear and who has eyes will see. Peace and love, Brother Crumb. I'm saying peace and love back. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Number three of this perfect trifecta is Pharaoh Israel. It says, peace, Crumb. What up, though? If you are from the D, Detroit, then you know exactly what the greeting is. What up, though? I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Family, before we get started in this video, I want to just put some respect on the family's name. I do have a special guest. That is a true statement. It is my brother from another mother, Fats. Peace, brother. How are you? Peace, my brother. How you doing today, man? Thank you. It's an honor and a blessing to be up here with the big crumb crumb. Peace and blessing to all the supporters of crumb. You know I'm saying let's get free. You know what I mean, that's right. Brother, before we get right into this, um, do you mind telling us who you are and where we can find you at? Yes, I am a uh, fat um, uh, chapter leader of the Universal Zulu Union. Not the Zulu Nation, Chapter 30, uh, Order of the Solar Flare Natives out of Norfolk, Virginia, 757. Um, I am an author. Um, I am a teacher. I am an entrepreneur. I have Soul Trust Records. I have an independent record label. I'm also an MC and a member of a group called The Rubber People. Um, I'm a hip hop culturalist and extremist. Uh, I've been in the culture since I've been nine years old. Um, I now teach it. Uh, so I wrote a book entitled Off Stage, wrote a curriculum with it. Um, anything hip hop, it's, it, it is what it is. More culture than the actual musical aspect of it. I'm more of a hip hop culturalist than more of a connoisseur of the music. But um, that's what it is, man. And thanks again for being here. Peace. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's the author. Of, I, I put backstage by accident. Please, please, please forgive me. It's actually off stage. Let me put some respect on his name. What a wonderful material, uh, 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 a wonderful work of literature. I must say so myself. Um, so there it is right there, family. Uh, very, very dope work. He put his heart into that. He, not his heart, his heart chakra. Puts heart yeah, chakra. In I like that. That's right. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Oh, I like that right. heart chakra. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to do all these things within the first five minutes. So kind of just, you know, housekeeping. It's like when you walk into somebody's house, you kind of wipe your feet before you go in. So I want to ask the family as a part of the housekeeping, you know, if you could join me by hitting the like button if you're a master student. If you're new, hold off to the end of the video. And if you like it, then you can make the determination. Then also, if you want to support the brother, you can go to his cash app, Money Sign Culture Chronicles. Brother, did I spell that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if you want to support him, you can go there, cash out, money sign, culture chronicles. So yeah, I think, 
I'm sorry? Well, I, I was about to say, yeah, just in case if you did want that book, it's a dub. You send the dub. You can DM, you can DM me, and I'll get you my email address before we leave. I'll mail you the book. Deal. Can't beat that with a bat. Yeah. Um, with that said, we've reached the, uh, I guess say one hour. <laughs> we've reached the uh, five-minute mark. So without further delu- uh, delay, I want to jump right into it. Let me... Um, Hold on, I should. Oh, oh, it's right over here. That's why I couldn't find it. Uh, Origins of Bad Boy. Well, what? I just gotta find out. That's Crumb Crumb TV. I got three email addresses, so I was I wasn't sure where I put it. So let me just uh, beam me up, Scotty. That little PowerPoint, and we're gonna get into the origins of Bad Boy Records. Uh, in two hot seconds, I appreciate your patience. Also, while I'm pulling this up, I want to mention to the family that uh, my guest, I do know him personally. Personally, We actually from the same hood. So, um, you know, I've seen him. I, I, I heard about him before I ever met him. You know, he's 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 a big name in my community. Uh, with that said, uh, Virginia 757 stand up. Also put some put some respect on their name. 804 stand up as well. I know the 804 is in the building as well. So, you know, we we fam, both we sides. fam though. But yeah, we fam. We <laughs> fam for real. Yeah, no question. We was 804 before 757. Yeah, you know I mean, so oh really? We, yes, sir. Yeah, I, we became okay. we, we was we was 804. I think we became 757 in 92 or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You yeah. teach him. You teach him. <laughs> With that said, the origins of Bad Boy Records. Um, I was listening. I was on YouTube, and, and I, I told you the story. I'll tell it to the family as well. I was on Facebook maybe like two, three months ago. And it was just really random. A Heavy D video popped up and I'm watching the Heavy D video. Now, this is the thing. Heavy D has been out of the loop for at least 15 years, at least. Well, he's an ancestor, so. He's an ancestor, most uh, uh, respect. With that said, I don't go checking for Heavy D for the fact that he even popped up was just the most random thing I could, I could even like, dang, uh, a Heavy D video. OK, I'll watch it. So I watched the Heavy D video and I want to ask the listening audience. I should have had my Jeopardy music on deck because uh, I had already asked you. I want to ask the family as well. Jeopardy music. But before I ask them, you know, I got to have my little uh, Jeopardy music to kind of run, run it. Yo, you got to do it, bro. <laughs> got to run it. With that said, family, I was listening to Heavy D, and who did he put me in the mind of? A famous artist that came after him. Go. I was listening to Heavy D, random day, and as I'm listening to Heavy D, he reminds me of somebody. I was like, yo! It was almost as if they were copying Heavy D. Hmm. Who, who was I thinking about? All right. Now I know there is a. There we go. There we go. There it is. The family. <laughs> <is>. the family. <laughs> Word. I was like, yo, how come Heavy D remind me of Biggie? So you know me being a master student, I went and did some research. So um, it turns out, without Heavy D, you would have no Biggie Smalls. Respectively, Biggie is a rendition of Heavy D based on the powers that be, not because that he made that choice. That choice was made for him. If you go and look back, a young Biggie Smalls appeared on Heavy D's 1992 album. um, I think it was called Blue Funk. Did you want to add anything or should I continue? Oh, no, we good, man. Let's move on. I'm liking it. Let's dig it. So the question naturally is why? So um, I was talking to my friend who is actually in the music industry. Him and I grew up together. And he told me, he said, well, you know, Puffy's from Mount Vernon. And of course, you know, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I knew that. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> so like, All right, cool. He's from Mount Vernon. And you know what? My friend's from New York. You know, everybody from New York knows everything about New York. Right. Um, they go hard. Me from being an outs- oh, yeah. You know, he's from right down there, down the street from this and that. I'm like, okay. 
but nonetheless so right. <laughs> uh i'm like all right well why is it important that he's from mount vernon they said oh because you know heavy d's from mount vernon i'm like okay mm -hmm. interesting but why is that important well the story goes this is according to wrapup.com and this is also from various sources in the early 1990s Andre Harrell gave a young Sean Combs his big break when he, let me take this banner off. This is the branding. Let's take this off. When he, when he hired him as an intern at Uptown Records, after being introduced to him by Heavy D. Heavy mm. D is from the same hood that Puffy's from. Puffy was a, 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 a little thirst bucket back when he was young and he wanted to get on. And he was willing to do anything, even wash cars. Uh, uh, remember when he sent them people all the way down the street to go get a a donut or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Dave Chappelle went in on that. Yeah. The uh, milk, the Cambodian milk or whatever, the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> the Cambodian virgin milk. Yeah. That... <laughs> <sighs> so, you know, I know we laugh that he's he was a thirst bucket and yeah I'm, i am being a little bit of bit funny but he was willing to do whatever it is he to cheesecake just like when he sent making the band down the street or all the way to nathan's or someplace to go get cheesecake yeah. um he himself did that so it wasn't a humiliation ritual that he was trying to oh making the band he trying to make y'all he trying to punk y'all no he he had to do something to that effect to get on but nonetheless let me just continue reading unless you wanted to uh tap in all, all i wanted to say right quick was as far as that me being an artist at the time uh making the band was out um i feel like this when it comes to people in puff daddy's position and it's a big deal that we're dealing with with eldership and the new and i guess with, for lack of a better term the new school or the younger generations coming up in hip-hop you see it a lot i um i stream on twitch djs up there all the time there's one dj boogie blind who was saying that the elders or people in the positions that could make us, that could help us to get to better places in the industry, they, they have the, I guess, wherewithal to make us, make it be easier for us. But for some reason, like Puff Daddy in that show, they want us to do what I guess he had to do to get on. And some of us down here feel like that's kind of whack because you already got an opportunity. So we don't have to, we thought you were making strides. So we didn't have to do that. But you, I guess, feeling like, I want you to go through what I went through to get on, which I'm not really against either. That's a person's ideology. I'm not against that. But I have noticed that down here in independent, uh, starving artistdom, some of us look at Puff Daddy like, damn, man, that's kind of, why you going to son do like that, man? You got the resources, man. You could really just kind of put him on. But if you want him to, you know, make him get the milk, that's good. So on one end, we feel like that. On another end, certain people that in, in the industry feel like, well, you got to work to get here, bro. So I ain't mad at either. You know what I mean? It's a perfect, it's a balance to me on that, so word up you, you know and i have to say because i was going to tap in for the other side but you're well spoken you've you, you've acknowledged both sides there's no need for me to beat that horse however i looked at kanye when he got into millionaire million dollar billion dollar status i don't know if this is right listening audience and and to my guests i'm not saying this is the truth i'm saying that it appeared that versus paying dues and I'm, I'm I'm totally down with paying dues. I'm totally down with rites of passage. But Definitely. <laughs> when Kanye got that crazy haircut and they made his ass live in a stadium, it's like, okay, to get to that next level, do you have to do some type of humiliation ritual? I don't know. It, it, it seems that way, especially with the powers that be. I know everybody by now has heard the rumors of what has to seem, what seems to have to go backstage because it's all speculation for us at this point. We haven't been backstage with moguls. But a lot of partying, a lot of crazy partying goes on according to those levels. And the same thing, like you said, with Kanye, I just think that people, even though they can provide that easier route for you, I paid the dues, you need to pay the dues. You know, so I guess that's, I guess, how they're, you know, figuring that out. You know what I mean? Remember, uh, Jay-Z came on and, and, and he said this himself. I party with weirdos. Yeah, ho. Yeah, ho. He said they bang with weirdos. Not my words. Oh, that's your opinion, Crump. No, that's dry. No, that's what the, that's what the man said. Yeah, like you said, but again, Jay Z has what dancing with that white chick in Europe. Uh, what the chick that the human what? body cuts the. He did some Very ritual, tough. something I never thought anybody from Marcy Projects would even think to do. 
You know, Jay Z is doing some some. I party with weirdos. <laughs> Ashe, you know what I mean? He spoke, but I like you, I like what you said earlier. If he spoke it, if that's what he said, then hey. Yeah. <laughs> so we see where um he's from the same hood as old boy. I don't know, depending on how you look at it, he does his humiliation rituals, he does his his paying his dues, tomato, tomato. He right. does that, he gets on with uh Uptown Records. It says Harrell fired Diddy in 1993 before he went on and found Bad Boy Records or founded ba Bad Boy Records. I guess Andre didn't want two kings in the in one castle, Diddy told the New York Times. Mm. I, I'll continue on unless you want to add something. No, nah, let's move on, bro. I'm good with that. He, he said what he had to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, for a lot of people, because remember, this is the origins of Bad Boy. A lot of people don't know anything about Bad Boy until Bad Boy comes on the scene. But I wanted to point out to the family, Puff was on the scene before he created Bad Boy. And he was doing a lot. Respect. And before Biggie. I'll, I'll just want to add on right quick. For those of us that are pursuing music industry or things like that, nobody ever shows up like that. Any by the time you see a Puff Daddy with a Bad Boy, mad dudes were paid backstage doing stuff da 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 that's why he's well known jermaine dupree was a dancer for houdini people a lot of people don't realize that but he danced for houdini him and puff daddy they were dancers for houdini back in the day and that's where their all their adventures started they were smart enough to rub the elbows not be rappers and become record execs instead they were smart <laughs> you ought to be so for those the family that may not know about Uptown Records, here's a really quick blurb. We're gonna go through it pretty fast. Mm. It says, Uptown Records was a record label based in New York City, founded in 1986 by one time rapper, Andre Harrell. From the late 1980s into the early 1990s, it was a leader, Uptown Records, in R&B and hip hop. During the 1990s, aided by its A&R worker, Sean Combs, it led the fusion of these two genres its artists included i'll be sure you know my light-skinned twin ah um, clone true indeed no but it's a clone though a little bit <laughs> christopher williams god another one which, which was a group heavy d and the boys which was a, a group father mm -hmm. mc jodeci which was a group mary j blige notorious big and soul for real which was a group as well he also worked with Groovy Chill. A lot of people don't mention he's more of an underground obscure, but Groovy Chill, like that, all that house party era, has a lot to do with this, 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 this whole jank too. You know what I mean? So also, as you mentioned, Lost Boys was uh came from out of the uptown regime. Uptown fan, yes, sir. Yep. Uptown family. <laughs> yep. So moving on. The key, the secret sauce to this uptown burger, uh <laughs> Is, is is none other than Teddy Riley. So in 1986, Andre Harrell founded Uptown Records. Also in 1988, two years after he comes with the company, they release uh, Eponymous album, a group whose Teddy Riley, a record producer, would lead the sound New Jack Swing. Uh, let me just go to my next slide. I'm sorry, give me just a second. Boom. Heard up, good to go. Uh, the nice guy message. album, I'm sorry? No, well put together, bro. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Guy album reached number one on the R&B chart. Now, remember, these, these people are all coming from the origins of Bad Boys, which is Uptown. Uptown Secret Sauce, their, their, their secret producer is going to be a, 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 a brilliant mind by the name of Teddy Riley. And remember, just like without Heavy D, you would have no biggie, same thing. Without for without Teddy Riley, you would have no Pharrell, brother. Can I you say that, please? Oh yeah, no point, no problem, no 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 doubt. Um, Teddy Riley came down here in 1992, our very era, 757. For those y'all that remember, uh, what was that? Um, Rump Shaker video was done at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. You know what I mean? Out here, that's when he had moved his whole camp pretty much down here, and that New Jack Swing thing was in um full effect. I was in a talent show with Pharrell, 1992, Princess Anne High School. Um, Pharrell was already kind of advanced with the music, going to that advanced music school. 
he was playing the grand piano at the talent show while rest of, rest of us, we rapping and dancing and stuff. So Pharrell was already an anomaly, more professional, had the dope package, Teddy Riley was like, boom. Um, let me go ahead and put you deep. So Pharrell, for the first few years of his career, did this same dudes plan we were just talking about earlier with going to get the coffee, going to get the L's, writing songs for SWV, writing songs for Teddy Wright, writing songs as a ghostwriter or whatever. Because a lot of times I want to add on to this too. People say, you'll see an album and it'll say Puff Daddy produced it. Sometimes he didn't produce it. He bought the track. So sometimes in the industry, somebody is like produced by Puff Daddy. Sometimes he buys the beat. But it's his beat, so he can say on record that he's a producer. But that's what that's what was going down. So Pharrell, as a young person coming up he, from here, right out here in Virginia Beach, where I'm at right now, he um, Teddy Riley took him under his wing, and Teddy Riley had Future Studios right here on Virginia Beach Boulevard, right out here for many years. Pharrell, that was Pharrell's foundation. He did a lot of he did all the dues paying that people do when you don't see him. Then you Pharrell shows up. All his dues paying was done under Teddy Riley. So yeah, without without Teddy, there's 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 no Pharrell, and it's like Teddy did what Andre and Harrell did to him. You see what I'm saying? It's like he continued that trend, which is really dope. People, I don't know if people realize this, but Teddy Riley produced the show, Dougie Fresh's song, da, 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 da. six minutes. Teddy Riley produced that. He also produced. I don't know if anybody knows of an artist named Redhead Kingpin. Again, right around that house party era, all the Redhead Kingpin stuff was Teddy Riley too. So yeah, man, Pharrell is definitely. Definitely a branch from under this whole lineage we're talking about. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I'm so glad that, you know, you, you went into Teddy Riley because, again, he's the secret sauce. Uh, yes. he, he creates New Jack Swing. Now, I assume, and let me just take a pulse check, for the listening audience, if you are between the ages of 35 and 45, please press 666. Anybody who got Similac on their breath, I, I'm, I need to identify you right now. That's true. Because you're not going to know. Right. I because you're not going to know. There's right. No disrespect to the young family. No, no, no. But we're here to learn. We know that there's certain generations that were there and know, but still need to know. But then, like you said, 35 and under, 30 and under, yeah, we building with you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is all new if you're under the age of 35 no disrespect True. to the young fam so right. now uh new jack swing was uh, or new jack or swing beat is a fusion genre of the rhythms and production techniques of hip-hop and dance pop and the urban contemporary sound of r b super uh, i'm sorry spearheaded by producers teddy riley and bernard B bell New Jack Swing was most popular in the mid 80s and 90s. Lies. New Jack Swing is popular now. And I'll go on and tell the family about that in just a second. But it says creator. This is this is this is not me. Creator of New Jack Swing uh, says Teddy Riley. He he you remember this is the origins of bad boy. Hmm. I say so we don't uh, we don't know it yet. But yes, it is. It's the beginning. True. indeed. Yeah, right, 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 right. These are the beginnings of you know a mega house so one more thing and then i'll i'll stop beating this horse as you said family when you dealing with teddy riley teddy riley is like a uh uh what's that blind guy who can sing is it who, who is that come on steve stevie wonder the uh, legend. <laughs> yeah. stevie was talented back when he was like six remember stevie's on pharrell's thing he's playing the piano he's doing all of these things same thing with teddy riley teddy riley uh produced that uh that song for slick rick and uh well actually it was dougie fresh but anyway mm -hmm. dougie fresh and slick rick that the song show. was produced by teddy riley when he was 16 and it came out when he was 18. so these are children doing these things exactly I love that you mentioned that. I mentioned that I'm not trying to bring my book up, but hip hop was created by children, period. Just the culture in of itself. Hip hop was created by, ch by people in between the ages of nine and 25. No bones about it. So you're always going to hear these ages of these young people because we, we're the easiest to be exploited too. Poor from the hood, very talented, put you in the studio and create the new Jack Swing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, now that I beat the Teddy Riley thing to death, by 1990, Sean Puffy Comb, Combs begins an internship at Uptown. Combs worked with newly signed acts like Jodeci, Father MC, and Mary J. Blige, 
who all together placed a number of singles on the R&B chart thanks to none other than Puffy. P. Diddy. So again, you're going to have more secret sauce other <clears throat> than um, Teddy Riley. So now remember, what does Jodeci bring to the table? Well, I I'm sorry, excuse me. The very first song that supposedly ever gets remixed and i'm gonna need you to correct me on this one i got you the first song that ever gets remixed is by puffy who claims to be who, who claims to have invented the remix his very first remix was that jodeci song and if you know this song give me a 777 come and talk to me i really wanna know you i don't know all the words boom, tap. Boom, 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 tap. Boom, boom. Ha. Yes, sir. <laughs> boom, that's boom, that's the yep. EPDM, uh, EPDM drum line. They EPMD. use that same, I'm sorry. Uh, good. That was the same drum line that was on uh, a lot of SWV songs, a lot of total songs. Can't you see? Yeah, uh, throughout hip hop, though, he knew what he was doing. Very, very ingenious. That is a that is a bloodline beat of hip hop. Period. Right. That he was right. smart enough to put behind singers. Very intelligent. <laughs> You want to be? He put rap drum lines on R and B songs, and it went ape ish <laughs> to the moon. No question. I mean, yeah, Gene, Gene's the one of the smartest thing. I just want to add on that when I my first mixtape ever was a Kid Capri mixtape that I got from a homeboy, and same beat we talking about. He did Stephanie Mills, so he did one of those blends, Kid Capri, something in the way you make me feel. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. So when he did that, the streets lost it. Right. And um, I feel like Puff was one of these people going to Howard at the time, like, oh, what in the world? That's one of my personal theories that Puff was listening to a lot of mixtapes, a lot of DJs blending this already on the street, it not being mainstream. And Puff like, oh my God, let me go ahead and <laughs> let me go ahead and start bad boy, yo, and put some and put some and put some hip hop beats behind Mary. Put some hip hop beats behind Jodeci right quick. Very smart. Very smart. I can't help but to agree. So remember, this fusion, they told, oh, it was prime back then. Kanye said um, uh, he didn't fit in with The Rock because he said, uh, um, back when I was trying to get the ish The Rock, they, they said pink polos would hurt The Rock. Uh, um, <laughs> I forgot what song. I'm, um, I'm not a big Kanye head, sorry. Oh man, I'm a big Kanye head. Yeah. Uh, but on that song, he said, back when I was trying to get the ish to, to pop, uh, they said pink polos would hurt the rock because <laughs> Kanye came in with something that was a fusion. It wasn't as rough, tough hip hop. Drake, Drake was even more fusion than Kanye because Drake is singing on a goddamn track and he's a rapper. Like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, Touch the Sky, thank you. It was on Touch the Sky. Um, but, you know, we see where uh, where uh, Drake has the same fusion that Jodeci had and Drake acknowledged it. Drake did a song with, with, with uh, well, it was a freestyle with, um, with uh, J. Cole, I think hmm. it was called Jodeci, you know, and he says, hey, I was motivated by the origin of the boy. Hmm. Dope. Dope. But um, with that said, marking a fusion of hip hop and R&B was Mary J. Blige's debut album. This is the official, which is what's the 411. This is the album, not the song. This is the album that makes everything concrete. This was released in 1992, uh, whereby she was dubbed the queen of hip hop soul. Y'all got to give this girl. Anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we gave it to her. We didn't we didn't question it down right. here. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We see it says here, what's the 411 is the debut album of American R&B singer Mary J. Blige is released on July 28, 1992 by Uptown Records and MCA, which was the distribution. After singing a, signing a record contract with Uptown, Blige began working on the album with producer 
Sean Puff Daddy Combs. So uh, if you look at the genre, it says hip hop soul, New Jack Swing. New Jack Swing. That's that. That's his claim. That's 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 definitely pivotal in, you know, in all of that. This there is no bad boy right now. There is no bad boy entertainment, no bad boy family, no bad boy nothing. Nothing right now. Yeah. It's just Mary J. Just, he's an intern at Uptown at, to, to this point. No biggie, no, none of that yet. Nothing. But see, like what I like about, see, this is what won us over in the street. This is why Puffy's really smart. When the 411 came out, who did he put her with? Grand Pooba. One of the dopest MCs at the time. Grand Pooba 5 percenter. Puff was smart. He was like, well, let me put a God body. Let me get the streets wholeheartedly in with this R&B hip hop thing. Let me put Grand Pooba up here, a brand, a brand Nubian right quick. That was phenomenal. Him with Mary, arguably, you know, back in the day, we didn't argue for EPs. Oh, they should do an album together. You know, people do that now. But back in the day, they was just, uh, that combination of Mary and a uh, and, uh, and, uh, Grand Pooba, phenomenal. I can't take that away. Lord knows I can't. <laughs> However... I think she sealed the deal of R&B hip hop fusion with all due respect with that song um, that she did with Old Boy. Um, with Meth? Yeah, well, um, don't say the name of the song. Can somebody in the audience tell me the name of the song that she did with Meth? Um, <laughs> My uh, shit. My um, shit. You're right. This sealed it, though. This definitely sealed it. The one in Grand Pooba started it. Right. Kind of gave, kind of fed us, got us ready for it. Okay. This sealed the deal. Correct. This sealed it. Ashe, I'm with you on that. That's why I like how we communicate now, yo. I love it. Right. Um. And for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the song. Uh. But I remember the lyrics. Hold on. Hold on. Um. You're all that I need. I'll be there for you if right, you keep right, it right. real with me. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Like we Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Bible Dew. laughs> I took I one like look that. at me. You were my destiny. You're that's all it, that's it, that's it. Okay. I need. Okay. You brought that classic back with that hard meth joint. Son, right. crazy. R&B fusion. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. But he, Father MC too. You see, he got Father MC on his list. Father MC was doing that too. A lot of people don't want to credit Father MC, and I'm going to tell you why. Back then, it was hardcore. You had Father MC, and one night, okay, so I go to the club in 88. Father MC is being played. But so is Dayla. And Dayla's like R&B ain't in hip hop. That Native Tongues tribe, they like R&B. Think about it. People, I don't know if you know this. But uh, Rex in effect, they whip Fife Dog ass. Remember Fife Dog said, what he, what he say in jazz? Simply hardcore tracks, not a new Jack Swing. Remember he said that in jazz? Right. Oh, Teddy Rod and the boys felt some kind of way about that, homie. <laughs> <laughs> felt right. some kind of way. You know what I mean? So, that's why Father MC was kind of get, he don't get the credit he deserves with what you're talking about with this whole R&B getting them ladies into the whole thing and him rhyming. Yeah, just the R&B appeal, the image of R&B is what Father MC kind of puff that he was attempting to bring in the hip hop. But like I said, we are going to say this whole this Mary J meth Jane, that was it because it was still hard, still a heartbeat, Mary's subtle voice. That shit that that thing that thing that thing covered it us, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Now Remember, Uptown Records also brought us Guy. That was the official group that Teddy Riley was a part of. And one of the most uh, prominent members outside of Teddy Riley that was a part of Guy was none other than Aaron Hall. Now, just like you would have no Biggie without Heavy D, no Pharrell without Teddy Riley. Ashe. You would have no R. Kelly without, you wouldn't have R. Kelly without Aaron. R. Kelly, the original R. Kelly was, was doing his best Aaron Hall rendition. Aaron Hall set the stage with that type of gyrating and uh, Yo, uh, People used to get them mixed up, bro, back then. Like mixed up. Straight up, that's a testimony of me, them coming out, where R. Kelly came out, half the, they, oh, Aaron Hall killing it. Oh, no, nah, man, that's some new dude from uh, Chicago. Like, oh, <laughs> thought Aaron, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, we used to get them mixed up all the time. All the time. I mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, moving on. In July 1993, amid issues with Harrell, um, I'm sorry, Harrell, Andre Harrell, Uptown fired Combs 
Within two weeks, he launched his own label called Bad Boy. While taking, uh, while taking with him, he took him with him, the notorious B.I.G. Uptown promptly suffered, yet Combs still executive produced <clears throat> Mary J. Blige's second album, My Life, released in December of 1994, soon certified 3X multi-platinum in and the this album, And this album here on hip hop R&B, this one, My Life, the production with her, for those of y'all that are 35 and under or whatever, or whomever's never heard the My Life album, please, after this, sometime by this weekend, go live with that, please. The My Life album, <clears throat> Son, <coughs> yet, yet again and still was a remix. Um, that was a... Uh, uh, doom, doom, da -da 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 -da. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, uh -oh. all kind of stuff up there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Everybody loves the sunshine. Yeah, all that. That all song. That. Yeah. So, you know, just like he did when he brought them them different them, them old school tracks and told Biggie to rhyme over him, he took them old school tracks, told that girl to sing over them janks. Yeah, sing over these janks. Exactly. Uh, so now here right here is the uh letter from Andre Harrell Uptown Record letting Christopher Wallace know that they that he's got to get off the record label and he got to pay a quarter of a million to the distribution company. Whoa. Bro. Harrell, they, Harrell did him like that. Cross no. <laughs> in the name of European in the name of hip hop Jesus. What in the world? You know that man ain't had that bread, son. God yeah. almighty, yo. Yeah. That ain't right. <laughs> Come on, man. Right. Woo. Mm. Um but if you go listen to that song and party and bullshit and here we go. What do you see at the very top of that album? Oh, well, I'm sorry, that records. vinyl. Uptown. Yep. Oh. Yep. You also got executive producer at the bottom, Andre Correll, Sean Puffy Combs. Come on. Yep. You already know. You see it. So, you know, this is just something for the family. Just oh, I didn't know he yeah, remember? Yeah, he was up there. He was mm. up there. Now, <clears throat> also. Just a real quick, I'm gonna get back to the R&B thing in just a second, but since we're on a topic of Biggie, just like you would have no Biggie had you had that heavy D, you wouldn't have no Mace if you didn't have Biggie. Um, also, you wouldn't have no Cam if you didn't have Mace. Also, we know, uh, I'm sorry, also we don't know uh, Cam without Mace. Mace brought Cam too big one month before Biggie died. Wow. Um, right 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 and it says right here according to complex.com cameron has been open about being first signed to undeus entertainment and even rapping with biggie who gave him the nod for the label shortly before he died y'all better tap mm. y'all better tap all the way in i like that so now we see mace in terms of a style the first style remember uh, 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 Biggie took Heavy D style, but that rugged style that Biggie had, Jay Z took that. Back when Biggie was the first one rhyming on that rugged side, that was when Jay Z was rapping like the God darn Fulch Dickens. Yeah, he was in all. Can I get open? But he used to be a quick rap. People don't notice that. I, well, he, yeah, that's the. Can I get open? Was the first thing I ever heard from Jay Z, and he was quick. I so crazy. Ah, that's how he was rhyming at first. Oh, yeah. some God's effects. I'm type shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's rapping like that. So now, Heavy D's rapping like that. So Biggie start rapping like that. But Biggie also raps another type of way which is more gritty, grimy, hardcore, whatever. Heavy D won't rapping like that. That right. was all Biggie. That part, Biggie brought into the game, Jay-Z adopted that. Like, oh, I'm going to rap like that from now on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, that whole, that 92 era, like you said, that bad boy. Again, that's also the transition of also when just the music industry is shifting the paradigm. The golden era is now out. The drug game is in. You know what I mean? And so in Usher's, you know, this whole era right here, or whatever, with the R hip hop R&B to soothe us into it. So, <laughs> well, you know, um, the family is so on point because my next slide 
was going to talk about that shiny suit effect. <laughs> because I'm getting on this. <laughs> because at first it was murder mace, but he's like, nah, you got to be mace. First it was killer cam. No, you got to be Cameron. If you may not have known, it was first it was warlocks. Oh no, yeah, I got to be the locks. And <laughs> when when Jay Z was out there copying everybody, he was doing that shiny suit thing. That was all Puff Daddy. Yeah. Puff Daddy he, put that battery in everybody back. Yeah, that shiny shoot. Yeah, that's all Puff Daddy. Yeah. He did it with a lot of people, bro. Y'all got to understand the impact Puffy's had on the game. I'm not trying to even overlook the other stuff. We'll talk about it. But re remember, the, the way Fabulous rap, may, that's, that's May style. I could imagine Fabulous not having a style like, oh, I'm going to rap like that from now on. Hmm. That slow flow, you know, mm -hmm. um, I was murder. P. Diddy named me pretty. That monotone, like, dad, bro, you just, you, you, you. I, I think on a mixtape, uh, uh, um, Mace said Fabulous owe him royalties or something for breaking huh? his style so hard. <laughs> oh, um, man. But, Interesting. Moving forward, this right here, if you look at line th uh, number three, the th fourth line down, it says $325,092.91, properly following the complete execution of this document. That's what Biggie Christopher Wallace had to play. I uh, had to pay when they kicked him off of Uptown Records. And he it's had crazy because he didn't do much with Uptown. I wonder why he owed so much. He was in a bad deal. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> But Horrible. but here's the kicker, brother. Increasingly mm. dissatisfied, Mary J. Blige and Jodeci, particularly Casey and JoJo, both signed to West Coast management firm of Suge Knight, CEO of Death Row, based wow. in Los Angeles. Who told who sent them over there? Who sent Mary and and, and, and JoJo over to Suge? Hold on, where's where's my Jeopardy music? Who, I'm so glad we're here today. Who I sent them over there? I didn't. I didn't. Who See, this is... sent Mary J. Blige from Uptown Records and JoJo from Uptown Records over to a new management firm when Andre Harrell start tweaking? Who sent them over there? Huh. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Nope. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. They've been in bed the whole goddamn time. Ashe. He been in bed with these people the whole goddamn time. Ashe. He sent his artists over there. Ashe. This whole thing with, 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 with old boy ain't random, but I digress. Let me just keep going. Uh, increasingly dissatisfied, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, both signed to West Coast Management, the firm of Suge Knight, CEO of Death Row, based in Los Angeles. Thus, they gain double the royalty rates, more creative control, and sizable uh, back payments. So, hey, guys, come on. Hey, I know this guy. You go sign with him over there in L.A. Hey, Andre Harrell couldn't get you the money you was looking for, but I know this dude. He'll, he'll get you more and this and this and that. And it was true. It was true. Wow. Moving, moving on. Uh, you know, this is pivotal here. This, this is the seed to Tupac and Biggie. This is the Tupac Biggie beef seed, but we, that's like a whole other show. Let's move on, brother. I'm going to say that and we're just going to move on. <laughs> Meanwhile, the final Heavy D in the Boys album, Nothing But Love, was released in 1994 and soon certified platinum in the U.S. So this Biggie thing is working because, you know, the prototype, just like with uh, Father MC was a prototype to Method Man, uh, B, uh, Heavy D was a prototype to our uh, uh, old boy, or, 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 or rather the archetype, whatever the case may be. Mm. In 1995, Uptown's new R&B group, Soul For Real, which Heavy D brought, he, he, he A&R and found that group, debuted album, Candy Rain. We, I think we've done 666 and 777. If you remember the song, Candy Rain, can you type 888 and sing it with me? That's my if, joke, son. If you remember <laughs> the joke. song Candy Rain, can you type in eight? Hold on, hold on. I'm not asking nobody for nothing. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, it, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna do it myself. Boom. Here we go. Self sufficiency. Eight, eight, eight. My love, do, do you, you dream ever dream of, of candy, candy coated rain? Wow. That was my joke, son. That was my yeah, joke, son. I might start That's saying it. I might legitimately start saying it. Now that I'm feeling the energy, I feel like I can do it. Somebody tag Pop. Oh, man. Joking. I'm just no, I'm not Pop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking now. Oh, man. Um, so it says, um, as was Jodeci's third and final album, the show after the after party, the hotel. Later in 1995, Harrell left Uptown and became CEO of Motown Records. Wow! While Heavy D, executive vice president of Uptown, became Uptown's president and CEO. Mm. When when Heavy D died, yeah. Oh, Heavy D died. Oh, God, please bless his heart and all his parts. Heavy D didn't die by no accident. That's a high profile. That's a high value man. When God, they be more careful. You start getting CEO, CEO, president, music industry mogul. It's a dangerous job, homeboy. To be more careful. That's a dangerous. <laughs> Woo. While Heavy D, executive vice president of Uptown, became Uptown's president and CEO, prominent acts like Mary J. Blige and Jodeci signed directly to Uptown's distribution label, MCA. Mm -hmm. By 1996, MCA, along with Universal Studios, the, firm, the filmmaking house, was bought by the owners of Seagram's and became Universal Music Group. Wow. Seagram? Like ginger ale? <laughs> Or or, or or gin, Seagram's gin or Seagram's ginger ale. Either way, that's, tr that's true. In 1997, Heavy D resigned as CEO of Uptown, absorbed into Universal Music Group. In 1999, now remember, <clears throat> let me let me let me take this off real quick. Puffy, because this is the origin of Bad Boy. Puffy, after he's groomed uh, Mary the way he did, the way he did Jodeci, and, you know, he's the secret sauce to the burger. They start giving him different burgers. And uh, um, it was Children at this time. And this is according to thethings.com. Sean Diddy Combs used to take 14-year-old Usher to dot, dot, dot. And it says, when Usher was first signed to LaFace Records as a young teen, he was given to Sean Combs, then known as Puff Daddy, as a mentor. Time out. Okay, so La Face, that's Georgia, right? That's uh, Pebbles in them, right? La Face, that's uh, La Face, that's uh, Baby Face. So what they gave him to? Puffy, huh? Hmm. That's all, I just had a question, very interesting. I'm, that's why, that's another reason why I subscribe to Crumb myself. I learn myself, I love it. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, let's move on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're getting hot now. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, just like you wouldn't have Biggie if you didn't have Heavy D, who was the prototype, without Puffy, you wouldn't have the Usher that you know today. Without Usher, who was raised and groomed under uh, New Jack Swing, you wouldn't have... Um, uh, what's this guy's name? The Wait, this Chris, Chris, this Chris right yeah, here. Yeah, uh, uh, Chris Brown. Chris B. Yeah. Shout, shout out for to uh, Virginia. Tap a handic. Tap in. VA. VA stand up. All so right. you know, without certain people, you know, because 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 the industry industry, how wide and big is the impact of Diddy? Let's continue on. Remember, Diddy told uh, Mary J to dress like a boy. After she was the first one, this is this is New Jack Swing. Remember, after 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 Mary J. Blige dressed like a boy, who was the next one to follow? Yeah, dressing like a boy. Mm -hmm. TLC dressing like a boy. The skate dressing like the brat. Stop playing with me. Total SWV. They all they had the high boots, Missy. Yep, rage, light, boss, 
You know what I mean? The list goes, yeah, bunch of them, they all did it. So, you know, this is the origins. We, we got 250 people watching. Shout out to the family. This is the origins of Bad Boy Records. Brother, before I uh, close out, can you tell us, you know, who you are, where we can find you at? Yes, uh, peace and blessings. Um, I am uh, Fats, uh, chapter leader, the Mighty Zulu Union, not the nation. Um, chapter 3757, um, Order of the Solar Flare Natives. I'm an author, uh, I'm an author, MC, teacher of hip hop culture um, and history. You know what I mean? Um, right now I'm pushing my book. It's who I am right now, I'm the author teacher. You know what I mean? That's what I'm on right now. Um, a book off stage, the culture of hip hop before the elements. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much who I am. That's what it is, that's what it be. Um, you say you can get with me, uh, soultrustrecords.org. Yeah, soultrustrecords.org. You can also get with me, uh, Dollar Sign Culture Chronicles. You know what I'm saying? With the cash app for the support. That's pretty much it. That's who it is. That's where I be. Peace and blessings and thanks for having me, sir. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. That's right. You can support him at Cash App, Money Sign Culture Chronicles. He's also the author of the book, Offstage. You can check for that. I think this, uh, he was saying that's on Amazon. Just Google. It's very Googleable. Uh, very dope. I, I, I put the name of the book in the description as well, so you can check that out. With that said, family, this has been another installation of Crumb TV. This video is called The Origins of Bad Boy Records. I really hope you enjoyed this. You know, it's entertainment, but... It's still history. It's still, you know, uh, you know, and we can still we still have a lot to talk about with Biggie. We can talk about I'm sorry, not Biggie, but Puff, the, the curse of Puff. Remember, remember, uh, Mary J never signed with with Bad Boy. That's why she's still alive. I mean, I'm not saying that's why I don't know, but. We can talk about that side of Puff. I just want to put some, you know, respect on his name in terms of the impact. You know, whether he's good or a bad person, his impact has been felt. That is undeniable. With that said, family, uh, all the master students, if you're a master student, a part of housekeeping is wiping your feet on a mat before you come in the house. So if you're a master student, uh, could you please just hit the like button on your way in? For those people who are not master students, it's all good, family. If you do like this video, I ain't asking nobody for nothing. We don't panhandle. If you do like this video, then hit the like button. If you don't, then don't. But do me a favor. Don't do me no favors. If you hit the like button, you know, that's because you like the video. Uh, but, you know, don't be a hater. If you like it, hit the like button, family. Don't lie. To you. The worst lies the lie you tell yourself. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Is there an impact that Puffy brought to the table that I didn't mention that you know about or something else that was, you know, one of the tentacles of, you know, how how Puffy has influenced the industry. Uh, also, family, if you could, if you would, won't you be my neighbor? I'm joking. If you could, if you would, could you smash that subscribe button, family? Not only here on YouTube, but my website, crumbtv.info. I am, this is a true statement, I am going to have a Juneteenth event and you want to be the first one to know about it so you can get your early bird ticket. So you got to go to the website and just, so when I say subscribe, it's just really going to the email list. You go to the email list, you find out what's going on. That's the uh, the brunt of it. There's other bells and whistles, but that's kind of like, hey, to stay tapped in, that's how you're going to you know, do it by smashing that. With that said, family, uh, I want to leave you the exact same way I came to you. I am your brother, Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. Peace. Hey, you are now watching Crumb TV. Crumb TV. Hey, we in Chicago, y'all, and y'all watching Crumb TV. It's your brother, Tim Buck, too. I say. You are now watching Crumb TV. You in Scottstown, fine. Jim Inglewood, always up to no good. Now I'm telling my brother Crumb. You're watching Crumb TV. I'm your uncle brother, and you are watching Crumb TV. Reporting live from the Wild Hunter, South Side, Chicago. And you now watching Crumb TV. And you're watching Crumb TV. Crumb TV, baby. Hey.